Hey guy from New Plastic and I just really quickly wanted to show you how I made my cloth simulations. I've been getting so many questions about that and I keep getting asked about it. There are a lot of great cloth simulation tutorials out there so I never considered explaining this but maybe it'll help a bunch of you out there. I strongly advise you to check out my packs of procedural fabric materials all 100% procedural for Octane and Cinema 4D. They look ridiculously good and cover a vast variety of fabric textures like satin, knits, weaves, suits, shears, and much more. Overall, there are 159 materials or even more, which you can also get as a full pack for a cheaper price. Since they're all procedural, they're infinitely tileable with no repetitions, endlessly customizable, and you can render them at any resolution without breaking them. So yeah, this is my favorite pack of mine. Super proud of it. If you feel like it can help you, I'll leave the links in the description. Also, you can buy some of the prints and pins I made on my other Gumroad, so check them out as well. Beyond that, consider supporting on Patreon or membership where you can find these project files, watch these videos with no ads, get free products from the store, and other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic. Join our Discord, subscribe, and drink water. Let's go. So here's the overview of what's gonna happen. We're gonna create a cloth, bring it to a more interesting initial state, apply some strong forces on it, bring the time scale down, then bake it as a limbic and reduce the speed of the limbic. That's it. Let's get into it. So I'll quickly add a plane. Scale is important, so I'll use 2x2 two two meters, which is like the size of a blanket, I guess, and up the resolution by a lot, 300x300, 300 300, so you can see it's pretty dense. I'll just add a random primitive as a collider. Doesn't really matter which one, I just want to quickly shape the cloth around it. I'll up its resolution, slap a collider tag on it, a cloth tag on a plane, and in the simulation settings, I'll up the sub steps to 30 and damping to 5%. Let's hit play. And yeah, pretty smooth. Let me scale down the collider and keep playing. Yeah, that's fine. It's not really important. This just helps me start from a shape that's more complex than a flat plane. I'll current state the object to plane, hide these two original objects, and reapply a cloth tag on the new shape. Cool. Let's bring gravity to zero and add a turbulence force at a very small scale. So the noise applied is pretty detailed and small. Honestly, I want it even smaller to get really small scale movement. Something like this. Duplicate the turbulence and make this one larger. So now we're adding this really large scale movement to the cloth. And it seems extreme now, but it's okay. Let's add a friction force, which slows down the speed of the cloth. Set it to 100, which is applying just a little bit of slowing down against the turbulence force. And cool, let's turn all these off for a second and add a rotation force. So if I hit play, you can see the rotation is happening this way around the z-axis. So I'll rotate the rotation force so the z-axis is pointing up. So I'll create this vortex rotation. Nice. And to make it more exciting, I'll add a cylinder field, rotate it upwards, and make it a bit thinner and taller. So now the full rotation force will be applied within the darker cylinder and slowly fade out until the lighter cylinder and then completely stop working outside of the lighter cylinder. So now you can see the center is rotating and the outside is not rotating, but kind of being pulled in by the center rotation. Cool, let's turn on all the forces. And yeah, the large turbulence is really overshadowing the rotational effect. Let's make the rotational force much stronger. Yeah, this is better. Okay, I'll turn off the rotation and hit play, then immediately stop, turn off the large turbulence, hit play again, stop and turn on the turbulence, and do this a couple of times just to get some kind of a cool shape. And once I'm happy, I'll go to the dresser tab in the cloth tag and hit set initial state. And now this will be the initial state of the cloth. And maybe I'll turn down the large turbulence force just a bit and maybe animate the rotational force rotating to the side so the rotational axis kind of changes along the timeline. I'm just trying to add all these subtle abstract variations to the cloth. You can really get creative here and add whatever forces you want. The only important thing is that the cloth generally stays in place. It can move a little bit, but generally don't make it shoot out outside of the center real fast. On the other hand, make sure you have really strong forces on the cloth. It may look extreme now, but we're going to slow it way down. So whatever seems extreme now will seem much more subtle once it's slowed down. 
and maybe also keyframe the rotational force getting weaker along the timeline. Okay, let's say we're happy with this. I'll go to the simulation settings and bring the time scale down to 0.2. There you go. I think I can turn up the small turbulence force to have more wrinkles. Okay, let's say I'm happy with this. Now what I like to do is to bake this cloth as an alembic. Cool, and now we got an alembic object. Let's disable and turn off the original cloth. And actually, I want to turn off the fong shading so the cloth will be smooth, but the fong shading tag is locked on the alembic. So I'll remove the fong breaks from the original cloth and bake it again. I know I can unlock the fong tag from the alembic settings. I forgot about that, but it doesn't matter. Baking takes like 30 seconds. Okay, cool. Now in the alembic settings, I can slow it down even more. So let's do like 10% speed. And this works smoothly because our limbic has a green icon on it, which means the vertex count on it is not changing. So we can stretch the timing without making it choppy or posterized. Some simulations like fluid simulations will constantly have changing vertex count and order. So when you bake them as a limbic, they will have a red icon and slowing them down will look choppy. Now we can play with the speed without having to recalculate the simulation and get really quick responses offset the timing of the animation to find different poses that we might like better than others, and most importantly, get the real speed of the cloth within the viewport so we can sense how fast the animation is actually going, because it's much quicker to play the Olympic than the actual cloth simulation. And honestly, that's it. You can experiment with different cloth settings and forces, but the main idea is to have strong forces working, slow the time scale in the simulation settings, and then bake as a limbic and slow the Olympic even further with the Olympic speed settings, which will give us much better control over the speed for the final look. And now I can add an HDRI, add one of my favorite procedural flannel materials from my procedural fabric pack, add an area light for some strong directional lighting, and that's it. That's how I would do my cloth simulations for those videos. So yeah, nothing crazy here. Just wanted to get this out of the way. Again, check out the procedural fabrics pack on my Gumroad or the prints and pins I made on my other Gumroad. Consider supporting on Patreon and a comfy blanket of love to all my ravishing patrons and members you see on the screen right now. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.